Education at Shanshu University. And then the second speaker, uh, Mr. Christian Adiputra, MA, PhD, from Universitas 11 Maret, UNS, and Prince Satam bin Abdul Aziz University of Saudi Arabia. In addition, there will be four panelists. First, uh, Mr. Satria Adi Pradana, MPD, from UIN Raden Intan Lampung, and Ms. Nunun Indrasari, MPD, from UIN Raden Intan Lampung, and Ms. Agustina Lestari, SPD, and Home from STKI PPGRI Banjarmasin. And the last uh, panelist will be Ms. Nurul Puspita, MPD, from UIN Raden Intan Lampung. Okay, so it is now my pleasure to introduce Uin Raden Intan Lampung Vice Rector for Students Affairs and Cooperation, who will give his opening remarks this morning. Bapak Profesor Wan Jamaluddin Z, MA, PhD. This time is yours. Thank you. You get my voice, yeah? It is clear? Yes, sir. Okay. It's so clear. Okay, thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Tabik pun. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ba'du. Dear Ibu Fenty Lydia C. Regar, PhD, the chairperson of uh, IERA, distinguished speakers or panelists join here professor joseph also phd professor of english linguistic in the school of international communication department of intercultural communication at sinsu university and mr christian adiputra ibi phd from universitas 11 Maret and Prince Satam with Abdul Aziz University Saudi Arabia. The openalist, Bapak Mr. Satria Adi Pradana, uh, MPD uh, from Rio, Raden Intan, Lampung, International Office. Ibu Nunung Indrasa MPD from UIN Raden Intan, Lampung. Ms. Agustina Lestari, SPDM Home from STKIP PGRI Banjarmasin and Ibu Nurul Puspita, MPD, uh, also from Winaden Intan Lampung. Dear all participants, uh, when we talk about uh, reading and uh, listening activities, uh, let me invite you to see the reading and learning activities at least in two perspectives. Firstly, what we call as sociological perspective, and the second is theological perspective. Uh, as a Muslim people, it is famous that the activities of reading and learning are more than once or maybe more than 10 times mentioned in the Quran and written in several books of proper tradition. That's why when we talk and discuss about uh, the activity of reading and learning, uh, we find the defined dialogue of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the angel of Jibril when the Prophet received the first verses from God. It's mentioned in Surah 96, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq khalaqal insana min alaq Iqra' wa rabbuka al-akram ila akhiri Please read in the name of your Lord who created all 
That's the divine verses from God uh, received by Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our prophet in Islam society. Well, from the sociological perspective, the reading and learning activities are two main tools in acquiring knowledge. The main tools in enrich, enriching scientific works. The both activities bring about revolutionary change in the outlook of a person as a member of society, as well as the both activities give several ideas and spirits of social development and social change. That's why we can understand many scholars said the goal for the progress, for the achievement and the success of civilization of any nation in the world is the quality and the number of books and the number of person habituated in reading and listening. Ladies and gentlemen, in this occasion of the virtual talk 14, using term no. the essential benefit of extensive reading and learning, on the behalf of our rector, Professor Dr. K. Haji Muhammad Mukri MAG, I would like to welcome you all distinguished speakers and all panelists and also all participants to join the program and I hope the program will take a part in initiating to make reading and learning activities as a habit of our life. That's all I see as a opening remark from me as a vice rector of UIN Radin in Lampung. And please let me invite you to officially open the ceremony by saying and reciting Basmalah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. See you the next time. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof, for the remarkable speech. Moving right along today's agenda, we'll be led by our moderator, uh, who is Ibu Eka Wahyuning CMPD. She is one of the member of IERA and academician at Universitas Jember. Uh, Ibu Eka Wahyuning CMPD, the floor is yours and enjoy your event. Okay, thank you, Bu Aulia. Can you hear my voice, Ibu? Can you hear my voice, Ibu? Yes, but it's not too clear. Can you raise yeah. your voice? How about this one? Better, but still, we need... Can you raise this one? Miss Aulia? Yes? Photo session for us. <laughs> How about this one? Do you... Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, let us uh, have a photo session first before uh, our agenda today. So, uh, turn on your camera, all of the participants, so we can have a photo session first. Okay, Miss Isti? Are you ready? Yes. Yes. There are five slides here, so you have to at least smile for five times. We have no idea which one are you now. Okay. So, okay, please uh, open.
open your video so we can capture your beautiful smiles. This is the first one. One, two, three. And don't forget this for lampo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we come to the second smiles. One. Everyone is still trying to open their video. Okay. One, two, three. Good. The third smiles. One, two, three. The fourth smiles. One, two, three. The last smile. Moment. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. So I will give uh, the chance back to Miss uh, Eka Wajinsi. Uh, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Bu Alia. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good, uh, welcome to this uh, webinar. And today, the first, uh, the first speaker is going to be Professor Joseph Paul Shock, PhD. And he is a professor of English Linguistics in the School of International Communication, Department of Intercultural Communication at Sanchu University. And he also teaches linguistics and language teaching methods in the teacher education program Magic of Queen University. So in this occasion, he is going to talk about the wider benefits of big reading. So Prof. Joseph, are you here? Hello. Okay, so uh, Joseph, uh, the floor is yours for about 20 minutes. Hello. Okay. Thank you very much. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. All right. Thank you very much and thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. I'm very happy uh, to see all of your smiling faces and the joy that I hear in your laughter. I thank you so much again for having me. It is genuinely an honor for me to be here. Um, this uh, semester has been, and this year has been a difficult one, as all of you know, with uh, the pandemic and everything. Um, I, last year, I was in the Department of Economics, and we moved our mini two teachers to a new department in downtown Tokyo with a brand new building. I just saw your beautiful campus, and I was thinking how nice it is to have a campus like that. And we also have a new campus, but have not been able to use it this year because of the pandemic. So this has been... Um, this has been my classroom for the spring and fall semester as we get started here. Um, so I'm used to teaching from my classroom here at home, and I'm looking forward to sharing a few of my uh, ideas and thoughts with you about extensive reading. So I'm going to get started and share my screen with you now. Please confirm that you can see it okay as I begin. So here I'm sharing. Can everybody see my screen okay? Okay. Enjoy. Good. Okay. Great. Clear. So, great. That's nice. Okay. So we can see the title is Bigger Benefits of Extensive Reading. I want to think about the big picture. Oftentimes, especially in Japan, um, people think about exams. So if you go to the a bookstore and you look for um, books about English teaching or English learning, the book you'll see the most is a TOEIC preparation book. And so people are thinking about test preparation. In Japan, we actually have a word uh, called examination hell, where students go through a lot of suffering and uh, challenges to pass exams. And so it's kind of like test prep or die. There's a very, uh, a lot of pressure placed on our students to pass exams. And so what happens when we do this, when we put so much emphasis on testing, uh, so the question that comes up is do our students I uh, think reading equals test preparation. And in often, in many cases, they do think that. Uh, the author, Donald Miller, in her book, The Book Whisperer, says as much for students, her students in America and the state of Texas, they feel like 
reading is basically a test preparation thing. So how does that affect their motivation? And what does test prep reading tell them about a life of learning, a love for learning? So as I begin, I want to think about these questions. Do our students know the benefits and pleasures of big reading? I like to use the word big reading. It seems to be a little bit easier to say than extensive reading. So when I say big reading, I mean extensive reading. Can we frame big reading so we inspire students to read for pleasure and to read for life? Can we create a frame around the idea of big reading so that we think of it more than just for learning and study, but something for life? So I'm going to come up with this claim or frame here. My claim and frame is that big reading works for getting smarter, for growing happiness, for living the good life, and for having fun. So for foundational points to begin to give some background, why read big? Why do we do big reading or extensive reading in our English language programs? Do we have good reasons? And of course, you guys are involved in extensive reading, so we know that. But just in case for some good background, let's look at our foundational thoughts. So one of my favorite authors is Paul Nation. And in answering the question, how do we best improve how we teach, Paul Nation says, by adding an extensive reading program. So Dr. Nation says the most important improvement a teacher can make to their course, I would add the most important improvement a university can make to their university English language learning curriculum or foreign language curriculum or the national level too would be to add an extensive reading program. Um, Paul Nation calls it a cornerstone of any well-thought-out language course. This is from his book, What Should Every EFL Teacher Know? One of my favorite and very controversial professors is Dr. Stephen Kreshen. Um, here is a picture I took of him at an extensive reading conference here in Japan. And he says that extensive reading, big reading, is the best supported technique we have in the field of second language pedagogy. I will share my references with you at the end of the talk if you need them. Again, what is extensive reading? How do we define it? And I like to use a simple acronym, the word B, to define extensive reading. So B um, can mean a meeting for communal enjoyment. Maybe you've heard of a spelling bee or a quilting bee where people get together and sit around and make quilts. It's a communal enjoyment. So as readers commute with authors and story characters and other readers, they are in a reading B. But B also stands for big, easy, and enjoyable. Big reading, extensive reading requires large amounts of reading. And in my view, students have read big when they have crossed that 300,000 word threshold, um, according to the research of Nishizawa and others. Easy we define as knowing 98% of the words on every page or two to three unknown words per page. And of course, we all know what enjoyable is. So we've talked about some basic foundational ideas, reasons. What about the benefits of extensive reading? Maybe you know my colleague, Dr. Rob Waring. He says extensive reading works as a, as a completely indispensable part of any language program. ER works for language acquisition. Um, the scholar uh, based in Japan, uh, Dr. Hitoshi Nishizawa, one of my heroes, has done research over many years and has found that if a learner reads two million words at an easy level, it's equal on TOEIC results as the same as one year of living abroad. This is from Nishizawa, personal communication. Also, the reference will be shared at the end. I also enjoy the work of Benico Mason. She's done many case studies. This is an image of a student, a real student. This is not his real picture. But Kenta, his TOEIC score jumped from 625 to 795. He, gave, he gained 175 points on the TOEIC, or 0.87 points per every hour of reading. Uh, he read a lot of English books and words. OK, so let's talk about benefits. What are the benefits of extensive reading? In my research, I've asked this, my students many times about enjoyment. 
and they say they do enjoy extensive reading. We can say that extensive reading, especially the reading of fiction, is a form of play. I don't know if our students think of this, of reading in that way, but I want to frame this for them. This is according to the research of Victor Nell. Pleasure reading is a form of play, the intrinsic rewards of reading fiction. So what are the rewards of reading fiction? Reading itself. Playful reading is the reward. And so we get this because of the power of stories. Fiction brings us the power of stories where we, where we fall in love with characters, where we care about characters who face conflict and trouble, and we want them to get out of that trouble, uh, to, be, to experience redemption and hope. So the power of stories makes for reading to be a kind of play. The benefit is simply fun. But another benefit that we can talk about with regards to extensive reading is that reading makes you smarter. Um, I, uh, my, my name is Joe uh, or Joseph, or sometimes my friends call me Joey. And in the English language, perhaps in America, they call me the, Joe is kind of the average name you know, the average Joe, <laughs> we say. And I think there are two things in education that are the great equalizers. One, of course, is the ability to do mathematics. If you have mathematical skills, you can get yourself into a good situation, a good university, a good job. And the other great equalizer that raises us up and lifts us up is the power of reading. It makes us smarter. So this is from the research of Stanovich and Cunningham. Uh, Dr. Keith Stanovich of the University of Toronto is one of my academic heroes as well. I really love what he has to say about reading and intelligence. Um, with reading, we gain verbal intelligence. We learn language skills, vocabulary, incidentally. With reading, they also talk about the benefits of reading fiction and gaining emotional intelligence. Reading Fiction and empathizing with characters, feeling for them, helps us learn the, one of the most basic human values that we must share between all of our different cultures, the ability to empathize with another, to be able to feel for them. That's our baseline of our ethics and our morality, emotional intelligence, understanding how others feel. But we can also learn about health, how to be healthy, how to stay safe during a pandemic. And we can also learn about money intelligence, financial literacy by reading. So the basic point that I want to emphasize to my students is that reading makes them smarter. Reading is also a key tool in the living of a good life. This is from the scholar Mortimer J. Adler. My former mentor and colleague introduced him to me. He has written a book called how to Read a Book. It's quite a famous book for university education. And Dr. Adler says, reading is a basic tool in the living of a good life. So what does that mean? Um, it means that we can read to grow happiness. Uh, looking at you guys, looking at all of you, I sense happiness. But there is a psychology of happiness, a psychology of well-being, that even for happy people can help them become happy happier. It's a big issue in my home country of America. The most popular class in the 316 year uh, history of Yale University is popularly called the happiness class. It's actually called psychology and the good life. They had to use the largest auditorium on the campus. Um, students from all around the world of course attend Yale and they want to learn about the psychology of happiness. One of the most popular classes at Harvard University also is a class about happiness. And here we are with books that can teach us simple things, little switches that can increase our happiness. We can learn the tricks and switches that create more happiness for us and for others. This is something that we can't Happiness, I think, is something that does research, but I don't know how we could empirically research wisdom. What is it? The ability to live well, the ability to understand problems and solve them. 
but we can also use extensive reading to grow wisdom. We can grow wisdom as we read. And of course, we can learn about uh, success in life. Um, I like to read um, self-help psychology books. Um, one of my uh, favorite authors um, is a man by the name of uh, Dr. Richard Wiseman. Isn't it a great name to have a last name Wiseman? Dr. Wiseman. <laughs> and Dr. Wiseman is the professor public for the public understanding of psychology in the UK and has written some wonderful books about success. One of his books is, called, is about luck, called The Luck Factor, where he researched luck and teaches about how to increase luck, um, a scientific study of luck instead of a superstition of luck. So it's a very interesting con concept, the idea of learning about success through the power of reading. We all agree that life is good, and yet I think we know also and feel deep down inside that big reading can make life even better. So my basic key point is that big reading works for getting smarter, for growing happiness, for having fun, and for living the good life. Um, that's the gist of my talk today. I thank you so much for having me. And if you would like to have a copy of this talk or a version of this talk, you can visit my website, ilinguist.net, and there's a PDF with the references for you to go ahead and download. So that is all I have today. I, I can take some questions if there's time or from the moderator, but thank you so much again for allowing me to be a part of this wonderful event. Okay, thank you, Joy. And then it seems to me that you have not got any questions yet. Now we are moving to the second speaker today. That is Bapak Christian Adiputra, MA, PhD, and he's a lecturer of English Department of English Education, Universitas 11 Maret, Indonesia, and also uh, Prince Satam University of Saudi Arabia. And uh, he is going to present the materials on why and how to provide more meaning-focused inputs for our students in ELT classroom. Pa Tian, are you here? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you, Vega. Okay, so you have 20 minutes for your presentation. All right, thank you. Uh, let me share the screen. Okay, um, can you see the screen? Uh, can you see my slide? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so looks good. Okay, um, good morning, good afternoon, and also good evening, everybody. Hello from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Hello. First of <laughs> <laughs> okay, first of all, uh, thank you Aira and also Uin Raden Intan Lampung for the invitations. This is such an honor to be with all of you here today, given the facts that all the previous speakers uh, in virtual talk series were all distinguished scholars in the field of extensive reading and also extensive listening, including Joseph just a minute ago. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about what, why, and how to provide more meaning-focused input for our students in ELT classrooms. All right, um, let me begin with uh, this. Okay, so I will answer uh, these three questions. Number one is how do successful second language learners learn a language? Number two is what do scholars say about what second language, uh, second language teachers need to consider when teaching a language? And then the question number three is how to provide more meaningful input for our students. Let's start with the first questions. How do successful second language learners learn a language? To do this, we can get a glimpse of what we can strategically do to support our students to also learn better. Last semester in Saudi Arabia, I had a student who was very fluent in English. I asked him, Osama, what is your secret of becoming a very successful second language learner? And then Osama told me uh, that he went to the Philippines for one academic year in a student exchange program. So no wonder his English was very, very good. Let's say B2 
in CFR. However, he also told me that he had actually been fluent too, even before he went to the Philippines. He thought it was probably because he read and listened to something fun in English a lot. Eventually, it helped him to speak and write in English better. While I was in the US, I taught Indonesian language and culture at the University of Montana. I met one very fluent Indonesian learner in my advanced Indonesian class named Yanwar. The same as in the case of Osama, I asked him, Pak Yanwar, what is your secret of becoming very fluent in Bahasa Indonesia? And then Pak Yanwar said, well, before coming here, I took an intensive Indonesian language program in California. But every single day, I also read and listen to something that I think is interesting in Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, so that helps me a lot. I can see the truth about this, as he was always um, interested in discussing with me a lot of new things about Indonesia in Bahasa Indonesia. So every time we met, they did that. Uh, he did that. So in the picture, we met in Los Angeles, having lunch in an Indonesian restaurant, Sipang Asia, and yes, he ordered the food using good Bahasa Indonesia. He told me that he still consistently read news and watch movies in Bahasa Indonesia, in addition to learning the language from mobile applications, such as Bluebird and also Duolingo. This was three months after our class session ended. One day, Pak Yanwar met me, and then he asked me, Pak Christian, do you have any recommendations for me of any good Indonesian movies or TV series to watch? And there you go, as you can see on the slide. I recommended him to watch FTVs. And he did it. One week later in the class, he told me, Pak Christian, the movies are really good. Something like, Pak Christian, FTV-nya bagus-bagus sekali ya, saya suka, something like that. <laughs> okay, and I asked him back, how many movies have you watched, Pak Yan? He said, probably seven or even more. I did it every day. Then he started telling me about the stories in this movie he had watched. And then I noticed he used a lot of vocabulary that I knew he still didn't know before. Yes, he got it from the movie. The genre of FTVs, as we all know, is mostly about romance. And the language used in FTVs is very, very typical. So such repetitions, I believe, help him a lot in acquiring the new vocabulary he saw in the movie. This is what we also call narrow listening or viewing activities. Okay, so reflecting from my own experience, uh, more or less, I feel I did the same. While I was in college at the University of Lampung, I frequently went to Gramedia, Fajar Agung, as well as the bookstore in the hallway of Ramayana department store, or Lorong Ramayana in Badar Lampung, to buy books in English, newspapers and magazines in English, as well as DVDs of English movies. I felt like the more I read, the better I would usually write. Similarly, the more I listen to spoken English for movies and etc., the more I felt more confident when people ask me to speak in English. So in general, what can we learn from them? Number one, I think they are becoming successful second language learners because they got large amount of comprehensible input. From their activities of reading and listening to something that is compelling and comprehensible, something that we call extensive reading and listening. Number two, they both had communicative context to use the language. Osama was in the Philippines and Yanwar was with the Indonesian communities in the United States. Number three, they both had learning contexts where they studied the language formally with their teachers in the classroom. Finally, this is the most important of all, is that they both had commitment to continuously learn beyond the classroom. So this is not about how long we have studied uh, the language. 
but how consistent we are to study the language on a daily basis. So let's say if you spend, if you spend two to four hours a day studying English consistently, then we can see the progress in six to 12 months. But if we just spend two to four hours a week, the result will of course be very different. So this is exactly what Paul Nation mentioned in his very popular theory on the four strengths to language learning. All these four strengths need to be balanced in our classrooms. Number one is meaning focus input from a lot of reading and a lot of reasoning or uh, what Joseph just mentioned as big reading and also big listening. Number two is meaning focus input or more meaning focus output or oral and written language production. Then uh, number three is language focus learning, just like what we are doing in our classrooms. Then number four is fluency development, which is very important and can be done once again through reading and listening to something that is highly compelling and comprehensible. All right, um, but for today, I'm going to focus just on the first trend, which is how to provide our students with a great amount of meaning focus input. And the answer is pretty clear through extensive reading and through extensive listening. Let me begin with a very interesting discussion in one article written by Pa Wilandia about what commonly happens in intensive listening classroom. I would like to suggest you to take a look at it in addition to his latest article entitled The Primacy of Excessive Reading and Listening, which is also very, very insightful and also inspiring. But Willie mentioned that there were still relatively, uh, there were still relatively few textbooks used in listening classrooms that facilitated repeated listening activities. In other words, the audio is played more than once. Such activity is important as according to a study done by Dupuy in 1997, on average, students will comprehend better after they have listened to an audio three times. So not only one time, but three times. Moreover, the materials in intensive reading and intensive listening classes are mostly I plus one or one level above student's level or proficiency. Therefore, this is a little bit challenging in, in, and incomprehensible in a way. So extensive listening and extensive reading here, if you see on the screen, they are not about reading or listening for fun, but more about repeated activities to do skimming, to get the gist from the reading and to listen audio quickly for general understanding. So but we highlighted that in such intensive reading and listening classroom, teachers need to engage student, uh, uh, teachers need to engage students in doing more reading and more listening instead of doing other activities that do not really contribute to the reading and listening abilities. Therefore, in general, when we are teaching listening and reading in the classroom, we need to ask all these four questions of reflections. I will highlight the third question, which is, do we accommodate repeated reading and listening activities to help students comprehend the content better, as well as to foster their second language learning? So some suggested activities for this include silent reading, peer reading, body reading, and also reading while listening, among others. All right, I will give you this example. One day I taught my students in my reading class about color psychology. So what is the meaning of certain color, things like that. I initially, I initially started with this picture to set the context and motivate my students. We had good discussion as it is uh, something that they see every day in Saudi Arabia. For example, people in Saudi Arabia like wearing white top because, well, we know it is very, very hot in Saudi Arabia. So just imagine if you are wearing something, uh, uh, something dark, it's going to be uh, uh, hot for you. And then green in the flag means peace, which is also the literal meaning of Islam in which Saudi Arabia is the origin of the religion. 
So after that, I asked my students to watch this video. It's about why don't country flags in Europe use the color purple? A very short yet interesting video. Just three minutes and 26 seconds. I started with a discussion about it at the beginning, during and after we watched the video. It was interesting to see how students also tried to connect with what they have experienced before. Some students are from other countries, including me, so often they have different interpretations on the meaning of certain color. So let's say blue, uh, sorry, purple is different, uh, has different meaning in Indonesia as it is in England and also Saudi Arabia and Philippines, for example. And then after that, I will usually do this. So the text has an audio. And I will usually ask my students to firstly skim the text while listening to the, audio, uh, to the audio. Then I will ask them, students, interesting, isn't it? In your opinion, what is the main idea of the text? And then after that, I will ask them to read again while listening to the audio. But for now, focusing on some questions such as in Japan, what means blah, blah, blah. This is to provide a good reason for them to read and listen one more time. In, uh, in other words, repeated listening. Then finally, I will ask my students to read a lot one by one and then discuss together the ideas in the text. So usually, after listening to the audio two times, students are more confident to read and ready to take part in classroom discussion, as technically, they have known the content of the text. In Saudi Arabia, we usually met uh, students six times a week. Uh, oh, okay. So we usually met uh, the students six times a week to discuss one unit for integrated reading and writing skill, uh, reading and writing classes. So in one unit, we usually have two texts about the same topic. On Sunday, I usually started with this. I introduced them to uh, narrow listening activities in that ed about the topic that they are studying for that week. Every day, I will also share with them the videos from here in the class. Often, they told me, uh, sir, I watched this, this one yesterday. Then I said, oh, great. Can you tell me a little bit about the video that you have watched? This activity is actually really, really helpful as it is for fun, but they can learn a lot from the activity as it is related to the topic that is being discussed in the classroom. So again, this is what we call as narrow listening. So if we ask why we do extensive reading and listening, I think it's pretty straightforward. It fosters our second language learning and acquisition. It facilitates our second language fluency development practices. It gives us a deep understanding of the concept or what Joseph mentioned as becoming smarter. And then finally, it helps us become an autonomous learner. All right. Now I will move on to the last question that I have in my presentations. How to do extensive reading and extensive listening in our classroom? In general, we recognize the two types of extensive reading and extensive listening. Whether this is standalone activities or integrated into other courses. I will try to give a few examples for both. Number one, I guess, is by sharing our excitement of doing extensive reading and listening. This is something we can integrate in any language skills, uh, any language skills courses that we are teaching. So for example, in speaking, writing, reading, and write, uh, reading, and also writing. In other words, we have to be the inspirations for our students. So this is the examples. On Sunday, I usually do this. So Sunday is the first day of working day in Saudi Arabia. In Indonesia, it's Monday. I asked my students, students, how was your weekend? What did you do? While showing the book that I had finished reading, I told them about the book and discussed it with my students for the first few minutes of the class. Later on, I found out that some students bought the same book and read it too. Some others read other books and could not wait to share their reading experience with me and other students in the classroom. So this is an example of sharing excitement of reading for pleasure with our students. So uh, everybody, a lot of times, I feel that students will really follow what we do, not what we ask them, not 
not what we ask them to do. So the students will follow what we do, not what we not what we ask them to do. So things like that. So in other words, what we do inspire them. This is another example. I shared the movie that I watched during the weekend with my students. So while the first one was reading a novel, this one was watching a movie because I did it every single week. They got used to it. So later on, what happened was the same in the classroom. They couldn't watch movies in English and they couldn't wait to share it with everyone in the classrooms on Sunday and also the other days with me. So, all right, so this is about extensive listening and viewing. And then number two is doing repeated reading and listening. I really love this quote that repetition is the mother of all learning, the father of all action, which makes it the architect of accomplishment. But undoubtedly, we have to make sure that the repetitions we do in the classroom is meaningful and the practice we do is also perfect. All right. So this is the slide I have explained earlier. We do need to provide ample opportunities to read and read as well as listen and re-listen. A lot more engagement and activities on reading and listening. We do it to make students comprehend the text as well as make them learn the language better. And then the next one is new reading and listening or reading a lot of text on the same topics and listening to a lot of audios on the same topic. This is an example for this activity. So during the week, <clears throat> we were studying about public health. We were studying about public health. The texts were mostly about bird flu in 2005. So I asked my students to check this collection and randomly read as many as they could and whatever they felt interesting. What I have seen was that the more they read about it, the better they will understand the topic as well as the more vocabulary they will learn. This is another good example for this. Sometimes I also ask my students to watch movies. Students can write in Google search, for example, uh, movies about health. So something like that in Google search. And then they will find a lot of movies about health that they can watch. So they usually do that during the week. And then finally, extensive reading and listening report. This is the picture from my extensive reading class in Universitas Plus Marat. Very lovely students. Well, I know that it could be a little bit discouraging and distressing. Assessing student progress in extensive reading and listening is uh, sometimes needed. So however, although it violated the principle of extensive reading for fun, I often found that some students in my class did it beyond my expectations. Let me show you some examples. In my extensive listening class in Unitas Blas Maret, I created a weekly listening log. I asked them to watch at least one movie, but at the end, I noticed that some students watch more than one movie, sometimes two, sometimes three, sometimes four. So I did a lot of varieties from free to narrow activities, so they can choose the movies uh, and then the genre is really up to them, but sometimes I decided, so you need to watch uh, the, uh, the movie on this topic, for example, inspiring teachers, things like that. So this slide is an, is, uh, this slide is an example of such activities. And then sometimes I, also might, uh, I, I sometimes I also ask my students to report it orally, to report it orally. So in the video, you can see one of my students was explaining about the novel that she has finished reading. If you see the replies, yes, it's 11 replies to show you how other students were interested in it and how she fully understood what she was reading. Okay, this is the last example I have. This is another example of reading log that I did with my students in Google Docs. So I remember at that time, I asked my students to read any article in online newspapers in uh, a day, sorry, any article in online newspaper a day. So one article one day. And to write the report at the end of the week. Just two to three sentences, not very, very long. So this is already very long, actually, just two or three sentences. But uh, 
uh, and don't ask me, some students complain actually about the report, but they told me that they read more than they actually reported. So later on, they got used to it. After I didn't ask them to write report anymore, they told me that they read a lot more and they enjoy a lot more as well. So yes, the most important thing for me is that they are now enjoying doing extensive reading, which is very, very good for them. All right, uh, finally, this is the conclusion. Yes, most successful second language learners learn initially through listening and reading a lot. So should we ask our students to do it? Yes, without doubt. And then as Paul Nassian suggested, we need to ask ourselves, have we provided our students all the four strengths in balance in our second language classrooms? If not, then we need to think about it again. And then finally, second language classroom should provide a lot of meaningful input. So what should we do? Like what we are discussing today, it is through extensive reading and extensive listening. All right, everybody, thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Pa Tian, for your presentation. Uh, it seems to me that you have got one question here uh, in Zoom chat. Uh, pa Tian, what do you think about people who like saying, ih uh, sok ke Inggris, or ngomong tuh pakai bahasa Indonesia dong, uh, something like that, because it might be one of the biggest obstacle for those who want to learn English. Pak Tian? Okay, so thank you, Becca. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Um, I remember many people also said the same thing to me when I was uh, studying English at the Department of English at the University of Lampung. But uh, I think if we refer back to uh, the experiences of uh, successful second language learners that I have already presented earlier, one of the things that they did is consistently, uh, consistency and also commitment. So if you, are committed, if you are committed to learn the language, just ignore it. Just continue learning. Just continue doing the good thing that you are doing. I think that's uh, my answer, Ibeka. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, as long as it is something that is positive, then do it, okay? Okay, and then uh, some questions are for Joy. Joy, are you still here? Yeah, so Joy, the first question is from Bumatini SMA1 Sedayu. Uh, Joy, I agree with you that uh, e -R, uh, he or she likes giving uh, some materials for the students and then uh, Martini asked the students to create uh, a story in a chat group, in WhatsApp group chat. And is it okay if I give such activities in their extensive reading activity? Joy? Right. Okay. Yeah, I saw that question. That was a good question. I really appreciated it. And um, you know, it's always it's always nice to hear what other teachers are doing. Um, uh, I was enjoying listening to Christian Adiputra, Dr. Christian, because we we have kind of a similar outlook and similar perspective. I was like, oh, someone else is doing something similar to me. I can learn from him, and it kind of confirms what I'm doing, but also expands on it. And so, with this question, I um, I really think it's a, a good one because. You want to you want to get confirmation about what you're doing. I think one of the positive things about um, it's Martini Sma Sedayubantu. Sorry about the name, but I think what you're doing is really nice because you're focusing on meaning, you're focusing on communication, you're focusing on the message. So uh, Christian Adu Putra Adi Putra uh, was talking about the meaning focused input, meaning focused output. So you're talking about sharing your opinions, talking about characters, the story elements. Focusing on the meaning of the story, I think, fits really well with extensive reading. It can also fit with intensive reading, but I think that's a good way to focus on that, what you're doing there. The other side of that is to focus on things like, let's see, um, uh, lots of exercises and test-like questions. And those are the ones that I, I don't like to see too much of. If I teach in Japan, it's very test prep oriented, so you'll see a story on one page. 
maybe a page and a half, and then six pages of activities and um, exercise type questions and test prep question type of thing. So especially for extensive reading, that's not ideal. It puts too much emphasis on the, the, the test prep orientation and not on meaning. So I think what you're doing is great, basically. <laughs> Okay, then the second question for you, so Joseph. Um, Joseph, can you give me an example of an activity which a teacher can do during reading classroom to promote the extensive reading? That is from, I, I think it is from one of the students, a Patian student as one ONS. Uh, so yeah, Joseph, uh, that is a question. Can you give me- uh, Yeah, that was, a, that was a good question. I was like, whoa, what should I, how should I answer that one? So. Um, I have a bunch of stories that I use that, ex that, that share the values of, of reading. The more I've studied reading about reading, um, the more I'm impressed with it. It's like, you know, I went, when the first time when I started to get into extensive reading, I was at a conference here in Japan. There was uh, a man standing off in the distance wearing an Aloha shirt. And he was wearing a button. It said, I'm an extensive reading missionary. And I went, what? And it was Dr. Richard Day. And I went to his session and I was like blown away, really surprised at how amazing reading is. And the more I read about it, about the power of literacy, all these things, the more I'm impressed. And so I want to share this with my students. And so I tried to create stories about reading. So let me give you one example of an activity that might help promote um, belief, encouragement, inspiration about the power of reading. So let's say we share a story. Um, I have a story here in front of me um, from my website called Big Reading and the Good Life. And it starts out with a little bit of drama, a character who's struggling with something. And then it goes through and expresses basically the same concepts that I shared with you guys today, the same four principles that uh, reading makes you smarter, that it's fun, etc. It's good for the good life and things like that. So the, and the story is written at a sefer um, A3 about, so beginning level, 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 sefer level, higher beginner. So let's say the students do that story. I might ask them a question like, let's see, um, what points impressed you about this story? What stood out to you? But then we can do, um, and Dr. Christian Adiputra would be familiar with the problem solver because he mentions pollination quite a bit. But I could do a problem solving activity linking it to the story. So they've read the story, they understand what it is, and now we meet a person with a problem. Let's say it's Jim. Jim uh, doesn't read, doesn't like to read, and doesn't see the value of reading. In your small group, suggest five things to help Jim see the value of reading. So you could do a problem solver activity, a help or suggest five things to help Jim read or to help him see the value of reading or help him to see the value of extensive reading. So the groups go into small groups, they suggest solutions to Jim's problem of not being a reader, not enjoying reading. What can they do to help him solve that problem? And then in that group, that, let's say if you have a class of 30, you can have each group choose their favorite suggestion and then report it to the class. So that's just one kind of rough example that I made up in one minute. <laughs> so I hope that is a helpful one, but that's one particular way you might go about it. Yeah, thank you, Joseph. Uh, Baba Ibu, there are actually still so many questions, but I think, uh, especially for Joe, uh, but I think because of the time, so something that we can conclude from those two speakers are that we have to read so many books and we have to read uh, so many things written in English and listen to so many things uh, spoken in English so that we are going to have some fun and also uh, some, some funds that, that is going to make us smarter and that is going to make us 
to make us happy and because that is the, i think that is the the most important key in our world in our life today especially uh because today uh the life is getting stressful and stressful now we come to the second session that is uh the time for the panelists and the first panelist is going to be uh, for Bapak Satria Adi Pradana MPD. He is a lecturer of Lampung State Islamic University and Pak Satria is going to talk about the perk of extensive reading and listening in extensive activities. Uh, Pak Satria, uh, you have 15 minutes to give the presentation. Okay, 15 minutes, Ms. 15 Eka. minutes. <laughs> It's so strict. <laughs> okay, uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity given to me. Okay, so I represent uh, Rilio here, Raden Intan Lampung International Office, to uh, uh, also share my uh, uh, experience and how I uh, acquire my ability in, in English. Okay, I'd like to share the screen. Okay, uh, so everybody can see the screen? Sure. Okay, okay uh, so this is the, the things that I, I'm going to uh, share. Okay, this is uh, the perks of extensive reading and listening in extensive activities, and, and, and most of it uh, oh. Or from my own experience. Okay. Uh, yeah, the beginning. I do agree with the previous speaker that a joy and uh, uh, making something big and fun and easy means that it should be uh, con continuous so uh, that we can uh, learn a lot by such input okay and also after that we can make it as an output okay so this is my uh, experience what i have done in my previous uh, years of learning english so it began when i was first playing this game okay it was fun actually so that's why i do playing a lot of games. This is uh, a Super Mario, a plumber who are trying to rescue the princess. Okay, and then I uh, do really have fun playing this uh, because the subtitles in English. So uh, I try to learn more, uh, seeking for a dictionary and, and so on and so forth to find out what is actually the story inside. Okay, and nowadays we are faced by some online games that we can also communicate uh, thanks for the technology nowadays that we can chat we can uh, have an uh, online uh, sharing throughout the players in the world okay we can share and we can talk in english and can also yeah and so on and so forth like this one also so i began my english experience uh, playing this extensive activities and then I just woke up, okay, as a lecturer. So uh, I tried to uh, give some, okay, extensive activities inside the campus, okay, uh, to uh, enhance my students in acquiring English, okay. The first one is storytelling, okay, and also drama, speech, and debate. So uh, we have a uh, activity club, okay? So they provide uh, a debating club uh, that we call a Deixis. Debating uh, is uh, Islamic uh, for Islamic students, debating society for Islamic students. So uh, that's uh, pretty fun uh, uh, to, uh, what is it, uh, to train them, okay? Because uh, they are very uh, enthusiastic enthusiastic to to have those kinds of uh, uh, extensive acts okay uh, so uh, I will begin in the hypothesis by 
the comprehensible input, mm -hmm. how they are trying to uh, adapt and comprehend the message inside. So this is based on the uh, Crescent, okay? Okay, that human acquires language in only way by understanding messages or by receiving comprehensive input and learn and improve and progress along the natural order when they receive L2 comprehensible input. So uh, when we in intensive uh, reading, so it will be uh, based on the syllabus and also uh, how the teacher made the materials. So uh, then in extensive reading, we are trying to uh, focus on the fluency and how we're trying uh, how to uh, acquire the language by using uh, the the thing that we we love the most. I mean, the fun thing to uh, learn English is doing what you love the most. Okay, so uh, the key is the motivation inside, the drive. So uh, we're we're not talking about uh, the. Uh, uh, the 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 aims of the uh, uh, lesson plan or all kind of things like that, but it is actually uh, based on how you are trying to do a bulk activities, and then you are going to find yourself uh, the uh, frenzy of of having those activities inside. Okay, so this is the uh, how we're going to uh, mold or to make the behavior, the habit formations of for those who are going to try these activities. For example, like drama. Okay. And in my drama club, okay, inside a drama class, I uh, used to uh, share some popular or uh, classic movies to the students uh, to watch and how they could act and also break down the whole uh, the whole uh, uh, script and they are going to do it outside the class and they're going to do it uh, in their house maybe in the mall and maybe in the uh, mountains uh, they're going to do it very fun so they're, 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 they're having uh, their uh, fun time in creating those those acts okay so uh, based on Brooks and Leto 1664 uh, there are four characters of behaviorism. The first one is imitate, imitate things, and also the second one is practicing. After you imitate, based on those uh, those uh, books, novels, and also videos that I've shared, they try to imitate and practice how the actors doing it. I mean, how they imagine, imagine the thoughts, and also in the inside the the story itself, and also. The reinforcement after the practice and how we're going to reinforce them. The last is it will make the habitual formation. So uh, they are uh, unconsciously do the excessive activities without uh, we try hard to order them or to ask them to do uh, what uh, what we want them to do. So uh, they're going to acquire this kinds of uh, consciousness and then after that, and how extensive reading helps them in, in, in making a comprehensible input. So in intensive reading, we have the comprehensive input, meaning that that's I plus one. But but how extensive reading works, it's a vice versa. I mean, the the uh, reverse uh, for the extensive reading is uh, I minus one. So it, it will make them uh, frenzy, it will make them uh, motivated to 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 do the, the things not in, in order to to achieve such certain goals but they are they're trying based on their conscious uh, inside to to do it I mean so uh, uh, they could do it without any any force okay so it's based on the ERF 2011 and when students read extensively over a period of time their reading fluency improves and their ability to comprehend text also increases. So uh, that that's went well with my students. Uh, what's the benefits? The first one is enhance the vocabulary development. Okay, so uh, through readings, they they gain 
uh, a lot of uh, vocabulary input and then they grabs the grammar of the target language because the the, the writing uh, writing style will be uh, what is it uh, will be remind in in their uh, brain and also how they're going to be faster in reading speed and their fluency in reading so they are uh, what is it um, they're having the skill yeah to read faster and then more knowledgeable about many different topics because uh, maybe they, they'll try to to uh, read uh, a lot of things uh, and then they're going to master different topics based on that uh, but without any uh, in intrusion, uh, in intruding uh, order from the teacher, eh, of course. And high confidence and motivation. The last is positive attitudes towards reading. Okay, this this one is uh, should be attached in our students. The positive attitudes towards reading. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, when I ask my students to read more, uh, it seems that it was just like what is it cutting the air yeah like it was just uh, gone by the wind I mean uh, they're, they're hearing what I'm ordering to do but yes it was just like that yeah some some students uh, are not uh, reading I mean, I, I do not read a lot and so on and so forth because of uh, maybe uh, the difficulty of the reading that I've given to them yeah in the class and most of the uh, uh, options are too uh, what's it uh, too uh, difficult. Okay, this is based from uh, Renandia and Jacobs in 2016. The benefits of extensive reading. So uh, in intensive reading, uh, we're focused on uh, the language, how the language focus. But in intensive reading, we focus uh, on the fluency meaning input, and also in the amount of how we, uh, you read is very little in intensive reading, and intensive reading uh, is a book and week at the level mean, meaning that they will read uh, based on uh, what is it, uh, what they want. Okay, the difficult CEC so they can read fluently. And also selected by the students, and the materials for extra reading is uh, yes yeah, smooth readings. I uh, always give the Harry Potter novel to them in Indonesian, so that they could read a uh, uh, novel from Rowling's, and uh, they can read in the cafe maybe or in the mountain so it will be what is it fun yeah and exclusive and also how you check the comprehension uh, not always necessary for the students to choose the book that can already read so they are going to forget what they've read in the extensive reading uh, activities because there will be a lot of books to be read Okay, so if in intensive, uh, there will be an, uh, exercises for them. Now uh, we're coming to the extensive listening. So this is a, the the, the uh, important things that I always uh, share to my debaters that a good debater is a good listener. So if you want to debate someone, please catch the argument, catch the points, and how do they uh, uh, get? Uh, such skill uh, I always give them some uh, YouTube videos or, or maybe they, uh, share some uh, uh, competitive uh, videos for them to be to watch and then uh, they will uh, be motivated and trying to imitate and practice and then they're going to uh, find out the frenzy of having a debate and and, and then uh, they will do it uh, daily as a routine so as a listening is really needed for them to to acquire the productive skill and how uh, do they you still have two more minutes okay two more minutes okay it's not two more yeah 
but two more okay <laughs> so this is the uh, the ex intensive and extensive listening which uh, you may uh, choose which uh, extensive will uh, give you a very easy options to uh, uh, to listen like everybody always uh, listen to the uh, easy oh, i mean uh, easy song easy listening like that so they could uh, chase what to be imitated for pronunciation also okay this is the benefits from renandia and jacobs 2016 uh, the speech rate the oral word recognition the bottom-up listening scale increase the familiarity with the spoken form and target language and the extensive exposure to oral language okay the last is how positive attitude towards listening okay this is uh, my self uh, what is it reference quotation from uh, Willy Renandia so he said that you cannot change the world neither can you make a difference to every single one of your students but you can make a difference to at least one of them especially the one who need your help the most and I have a lot I have many students uh, in my in in campus especially in PBE that need my help the most and one of them is being here okay I will play the videos Hello, my name is Arina. Okay, <laughs> so the whistle has been uh, blown. <laughs> so uh, that's it uh, for my presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for listening, for my sharing. Okay, thank you, senior. Uh, Miss Eka Wayuningsi. <laughs> okay, I'll give it back to the moderator. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, uh, so something that we can conclude from Pak Satria's presentation is that the more the more book the students read, uh, the more fluent they will be in reading and also in listening. And then uh, we come to the second panelist that is going to be for Ibu Nunun Indra Sari MPD. Uh, Bu Nunun is a lecturer in Uin Raden in Tan Lampung and she teaches listening subjects in English Education Department of Teacher Training and Tarbia Faculty. And her title is going to be Alternative Activities in Extensive Listening. Uh, Ibu, you have 10 minutes to do your presentation. Time is yours. Okay, hey, thank you, Ibu Eka. Uh, well, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunities. Um, it's nice to be here with you all. Uh, today, I would like to share about my presentation. Uh, it's about alternative activities in extensive listening. Well, the content of today's presentation will be about my experience of teaching in extensive listening class and also some ideas of follow-up activities that uh, we can use in extensive listening. Well, uh, extensive listening is 
very similar with extensive reading, uh, except in extensive listening, the students are listening, not reading. The principles are also the same. So in extensive listening, uh, there is an exposure of meaningful input. Uh, so it means that we as a teacher need to encourage our students to experience listening activities as much as possible. But things that should be remembered, uh, not all input is meaningful. So we also have to guide our students to uh, find out the input that is beneficial for our students. And beside that, uh, as what Mr. Uh, Christian and Mr. Satria said, that the input used in extensive listening should also be comprehensible because the objective of uh, extensive listening is to help the students in developing uh, their listening fluency. So the students should make sure that they have comprehend easily about the materials uh, that they have listened. And then enjoyable. It is also uh, the important factors in extensive listening. So when the students are doing listening extensively, hopefully the students uh, get their interest, they do it voluntarily. So it is important for the students to find out the, uh, the materials of listening, which is not only meaningful, but also comprehensible, and also uh, the, the material that meets uh, their interest. And regarding to those principles in extensive listening, uh, it's good for the teacher to give the students freedom to choose their own materials. So there are some online sources that we can use uh, as listening materials. Uh, sometimes I use uh, these online sources, for example, like British Council podcast and also TED ED. And then sometimes I also use E-L-L-L-O. Um, I think this uh, website is good for listening materials. Uh, it provides lots of uh, listening materials and also some exercises related to the materials of uh, the listening that, that can be used by the students in, uh, to practice uh, the comprehension of listening. Uh, it also uh, uh, has the transcript uh, and I think it's also useful uh, especially for low level students to recognize the words and also to uh, comprehend or understand the, the listening materials by listening the audio while reading the transcript. And actually there are still some other uh, sources, of online sources. Uh, that, can, that can be used in our extensive listening class. Uh, I, uh, my, I plan to use uh, these materials in my next extensive listening class. Uh, for example, English Central, it also provides uh, interesting videos uh, and short videos and also Storyline online website. Uh, it also provides um, interesting materials. Uh, it contains stories of children, uh, which is read by the professional uh, artists. So I think it's interesting to be used as listening materials. And this is a um, learning journal. So in my extensive listening class, I asked my students to make learning journal. Uh, I decide to use um, digital listening, uh, yeah, digital listening journal by using Padlet. Uh, I like to use this platform because uh, I think it's attractive and we can customize the, what is it, the, the display of the digital wall. We can also customize the template uh, of the digital wall. And it is relatively easy to use for students and also for the teacher. So every week my students should uh, post something on their uh, Padlet. It can be the video or the audio or the link of uh, listening materials and also the 
record of their listening activities. For example, they uh, need to make summaries about some videos or just give comments and give their personal views about uh, certain videos or maybe just share their uh, listening strategies that they usually use when they are doing listening activities. So I think this uh, learning journal is really helpful for the teacher and also uh, the students. For me, it's useful to uh, record uh, my students' work from the beginning until the end of the uh, semester. And for the students, uh, it's useful for them to, uh, as a, what is, reflect as a reflection so that they can uh, they can know whether their listening fluency is uh, developing significantly or not and the next is about some ideas of follow-up activities that uh, we can use in extensive listening uh, the first one I propose a, a project about making voice over video um, Based over video, I think it's an uh, interesting project for the students and it also can uh, help the students and practice the students' pronunciation because pronunciation and listening has a close relationship when the students can pronounce certain words or certain utterance properly, uh, it can help the students to recognize the words in their listening materials easier. So there are some ideas that we can use uh, to make a voice of a video. For example, uh, the students are asked to make virtual field trip. Uh, it's quite easy to make. So the student just need their mobile phone and some application, some common application, for example, Google Maps. So the students can, uh, what is it, choose the every place to go virtually for example and then they uh, they rec record their screen they record their screen while uh, giving the voice to the to the video and then uh, other idea in voice of video is making movie review video so maybe the students can choose their favorite movie and then choose uh, scenes or some scenes in that movie and then give their personal view about uh, that movie, about their a comment about the movie. And another project that we can uh, apply in our extensive listening is ask the students to design a book cover or flyer headlines. Uh, I think it's also simple uh, things to do. Um, it just needs some application of uh, photo editing, for example, Canva or PixArt or any other uh, photo editing. Uh, for example, the students are asked to watch or to listen to some video about biography of someone and then the project is to make the book cover of biographical book or something like that so they can uh, decide what titles of their book were and decide any text that will be put on uh, their book cover or maybe about travel content or cultural content after they watch the video about that they can make a flyer headline about advertisement of uh, what is it tourist resort or maybe advertisement of cultural events and the next uh, activities that we can use in extensive listening class is asking our students to mind map a TED talk so uh, there are so many TED video in the website the students should find out some uh, video that is interesting for them and then while the students are listening to the video they are making mind map because I think mind mapping is uh, really helpful for the students to uh, to help them comprehend 
or to help them understand the content of the video more systematically. So uh, here is the example of a mind map that the students can make by themselves according to the video that they choose. And then uh, there are some criteria of assessment uh, that we can use in assessing listening extensively for the students. I propose some of them. Uh, those are completeness of task and also punctuality and students' participation. Uh, maybe you can put some other criteria in assessing students' uh, listening extensively, but the things that should be uh, remembered here that extensive listening or also extensive reading as well is not about testing. So extensive listening and extensive reading is um, for helping the students in developing their listening fluency. So in doing that, the students hopefully uh, do me, learn to really have one more minute. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Bu Eka. So uh, if we give complicated tasks or if we give tests to the students in extensive listening or extensive reading, I think it can kill the student's pleasure. So the good assessment ex in extensive reading uh, is the simple task. Yeah, as Derny said in 2001 about assessment in extensive listening, so it should mainly focus on whether the students have actually done the listening and how much of it they did, rather than on assigning them a grade based on how well they, understand, uh, they understood. And it also should reward the student's level of effort rather than the level of skills. And the last point that I want to highlight in this presentation is, uh, it, it's according to Alan Wright, if we are giving students extensive exposure to reading input, we should also do the same for spoken input to achieve balanced development of skills. So it, in line with Mr. Christian said before, we have to uh, integrate extensive listening and also extensive reading in order to uh, have balanced development of skill. So, yeah, thank you very much. That's all for me. Uh, Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you, Bu Nunun. Uh, so, from uh, your presentation, it can be concluded about that we can have some activities dealing with extensive listening, such as uh, asking the students to write down a journal by using uh, the, the online platform such as uh, Padlet, or perhaps we can also ask them to use learningapps.org. Uh, that is something that is more, uh, or is that uh, a little bit more famous today. Now, Bapak Ibu, we come to the third panelist, that is uh, Ibu Agustina Lestari, SPDM HUM, and she is a lecturer in STKIP PGRI Banjarmasin. And uh, Bu Lestari is going to deliver uh, the material on integrating extensive reading into academic speaking about opportunities and also the challenges. Ibu, you have 10 minutes to do your presentation. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so can you see my presentation? Is it, I think it was a, uh, okay. Yes. Okay, so you can see my presentation. I can do my slide. Why? Okay, let's just hope my presentation will run well. Uh, so I think there was some technical issues. Anyway, um, so today I'm just going to share a story, with pretty much my experience on about how I use extensive reading in my academic uh, Sorry, ma'am. Can you make yes. it bigger? Can you? Uh, yeah. I yeah. Um, that that was the problem. I don't know how. Why it doesn't work? Like I couldn't put it into slideshow mode. Uh, from the button downstairs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. I'm sorry. Things will happen. Wow. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
okay let's go now can you see or am i the only one who can see this yeah that's bigger okay thank god <laughs> so anyway um let's just say this is some sort of reflection of what i did in my classroom and i combined extensively and also speaking practice uh, but before we jump into the story, I need you to know that the campus that I'm currently teaching, um, I'm currently teaching in the department, but we do not have we do, we do not have any extensive reading course um, or intensive reading course. So if I want to use extensive reading, I have to integrate that into any of the course that I'm teaching. Um, that also means I need to do some adjustment and I need to customize things like here and there, so it could actually fit into the objective of the course itself. So um, last year I had this academic speaking class and um, being a teacher for a couple of years, I do learn that some of my students are having problems with speaking because they don't have enough vocabulary. You know, sometimes uh, they have a lot in their mind, but they cannot say it because um, they don't know how to say the words in English. So they end up not saying much in the classroom. And then because I was reading, uh, because I was teaching academic speaking, I put a lot emphasis, uh, I put focuses more on critical thinking, so like the activities, things that we do in the classroom, is like uh, trying to stimulate the students' critical thinking and also logical reasoning. So um, with that two things in mind, like vocabulary and also thinking, I thought that why didn't I just use extensive reading in my classroom, you know, trying to combine extensive reading and also speaking practice. Um, well, as has been explained before last, um, there has been lots of um, studies and theories and stuff that shows that extensive reading could help uh, learners to improve their vocabulary and it also help them to stimulate their critical thinking. So, well, I try to uh, put extensive reading into our speaking class. So how we did that, how my students and I did um, the extensive reading and also the speaking practice. So um, I told my students that they had to pick books or they could also pick comics if they're not into books but more of comic person. Um, it could be fiction or non-fiction. It could be no traditional paper book or it could be from online platform and they could choose any genre that they want, any level. So I didn't actually set them the level that they have to read. I also didn't set the goal that they have to read certain pages or they have to finish um, certain number of books in a couple of weeks. So it's basically um, I give freedom to them uh, for the students to choose whatever they want. Um, and then at the end of every week, I told my students to upload a video. So the video was about the page or the chapters that they read and also their opinion about the story. It was okay if they want to share their experience um, that's similar to the story or anything that they want to share related to the books or comics that they read. And it happened for seven weeks. And then at the eighth week, we had this presentation in front of the classroom with their friends. So it was part of um, the middle term path. So they present uh, one of their most favorite books or a comic. And then there were some question and answer sessions with their friends. Um, so we did that for seven weeks. And um, what I learned from the activity that we did, so um, I thought that my students could um, get new vocabulary and, you know, when they didn't know what to say in the video, in their speaking, they could, uh, they could just look up to their book and use the words that they write in the book or in their comic, and then they could use that when they were speaking. So it was really helpful for them. And then it was also quite helpful for them because um, it was a familiar topic things that they know, things that they understand, so they could talk a lot. Um, it was not some, you know, serious topic uh, about politics or economics, but it was more something that 
um, they're close with, so they, they could be more confident, they could be more comfortable when they are um, sharing the things that they wear. Those are a couple of things that I learned um, from our activity, but there are also some things that I know um, once the activity is done, once our semester ended, um, and I think these are the things that you could consider when you try to um, use extensive reading in your classroom. The first one is about the assessment. Um, I think I like assessment um, of vocabularies and also my students reading comprehension. Uh, I didn't do any feedback or podcast regarding my students' ability, especially about their vocabularies or about their reading comprehension. Um, because I was having I was having a speaking class, so my assessment, my evaluation is leaning more towards their speaking ability, you know, their fluency, their confidence, um, gesture, and also organization of the organizations and stuff. So I didn't really pay attention to um, my students' vocabulary and also reading comprehension. So I think. Um, if you want to see how much the improvement that your students make, um, I think it's also essential to do pre test before you start uh, in the beginning of the class and also uh, some post you know, at the end of the program so to see how much the improvement of your students. And um, this is what I found out later on once the semester ended. And, um, you know, you have you had a talk with your students, some some chit chat and stuff, and um, some students think that the extensive reading it was not a very leisure activity. Um, you know, extensive reading is supposed to be fun. They read something that they like. Turn out it wasn't that fun for them. Why? Because of the the assignment that I gave them after week. So they. Some of the students found that, um, you know, making video and the review every week was burdensome uh, for them. It was like some hard paper, some killer joy, things that they don't really like to do because it was an assignment, you know. Um, but I did that because I need to make sure that the students read the book, you know. So I think um, in the future, if I want to um, use extensive reading. I think I need to find an alternative way on how to track um, the students' progress and not making them feel stressful about that. So um, I think, of course, we cannot expect a very some grand improvement, a very huge improvement, um, just by having seven weeks of extensive reading. But at least. Um, we can introduce extensive reading, what is actually extensive reading to the students, and some students um, make a progress um, during the seven weeks. Uh, well, few students did not make any progress at all, but some making progress, some making like, small progress, but still, um, how small, no matter how small the progress, it is still a progress. And, um, and at the very least, um, well, at least I introduced my students to what I and reading, and I hope that they could continue reading um, once our class is done. So um, that was my story um, for what I did with my class last year um, when I combined extensive reading and also teaching practice. Um, if you have similar stories, or if you have better way to track your students' reading progress, um, you can write them on the chat box so I could, you know, use that for my future reference, for my future activities. Thank you very much. To you, Bu Eka. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, although actually you still have one minute, but before uh, the whistle is blown, then you can stop uh, having the discussion. Thank you very much, ma'am. And something that we can have from Bula Starry's presentation is that again, extensive reading will help our students improve vocabulary and find and their critical thinking, so that it is expected that finally they will also be fluent in their speaking. So that is something that we can get from uh, Bula Starry's presentation. 
presentation. Now we come to the last but not least uh, panelist, that is Ibu Nurul Puspita MPD. Ibu, are you here? Okay, yeah, you are here. So, Bu Nurul is a lecturer of English Department, Tarbiah and Teacher Training Faculty UIN Raden Intan Lampung, and she has been teaching in that faculty uh, for five years. And uh, Bu Nurul is going, uh, Bu Nurul usually teaches lesson planning and writing and also likes to produce some articles, likes to write down some articles dealing with writing in collaboration with her husband. So now, uh, Ibu, you have 10 minutes to, to do the presentation. You are still mute, Ibu. Okay. Okay. I'll try to start sharing first. Thank you very much, Ibu Eka, uh, for the time. Good afternoon, everybody. I believe that uh, it has been afternoon, right? So in this... Uh, occasions um, I asked the last panelists like Boeka have said to us last but not least hopefully my sharing will give uh, inspirations to all participants and actually I'm happy to be here as one of the panelists with uh, our great speakers uh, and also other great panelists and luckily uh, they are my seniors, so I'm very happy to be here. Well, like Bueka have said to us, that uh, majority is in lesson planning, and I usually teach uh, writing. So actually, I didn't have any experiences related to extensive reading, and but uh, but big but. <laughs> Uh, because of extensive reading and also extensive listening has have given uh, many benefits in our teaching and learning process for all uh, aspects in English language skills and also uh, English language components such as vocabulary and also um, what is it grammar um, I'm sorry Boeka uh, is my slide short Still the first one, still on the first page. Okay, still at the first one. Well, uh, so in these settings, I'll try to uh, plan to, uh, to make or design my program, especially in my writing class. Since in this semester, I have six writing class in this semester. So I'll try to uh, implement or plan uh, in making or designing an extensive reading program in one of my writing class. Uh, it will be a book club discussion. It's an extensive reading program in my writing class. Why? I'll try to design such kinds of an extensive reading program in my writing class because there are some, uh, some experts that have uh, done uh, such kinds of research in integrating uh, in integrating extensive reading characteristic or uh, activities in writing tasks. For example, here is Hafiz and Dur. Uh, it's about the extensive reading extension in teaching writing. So the result is that uh, extensive reading activity is held. Uh, what is it? Show the gains between the activities during the teaching learning process and also the particular writing task. So it's my basic or foundations in planning this program in this master. And then um, some components, here is uh, some components in each of the variable on my program that's BBS on the relevant studies that has done by some expert. And then of course, it's on the ER characteristic itself, and the next is the steps of uh, ER program, and the last one is the book club, the book club itself. Firstly, I'll try to show the relevant studies that have done by some researcher. They are still Leslie and Lara and Joss in 2007. Uh, they have uh, successfully implemented 
extensive reading project with a book club cafe. It's about a new recipe for extensive reading. Uh, they have some reason uh, for conducting such kinds of book club cafe because of the limitations of uh, teaching learning process in the class. So that they try to, they have tried. Uh, they have tried to implement or hold such kinds of book up, book club coffee outside the class. And then, uh, as we know that in extensive reading or ER, uh, we can motivate motivate our students in uh, reading. And then the next is still the relevant study that uh, I've read related to the use of reading log, and it's directly integrate extensive reading with the writing class and. In this uh, research, research by Liu Taya, that they uh, that he has implemented reading logs for the students' writing tasks. Uh, that they, they have implemented such as rising, synthesizing, and then it can influence the students' vocabulary mastery. The next is about uh, an experimental study conducted by Al Mansur that uh, he has known the effect of extensive reading program for the students' writing performance. And the result is it can, or it gives a positive uh, effect for the students' activity in writing. And then the last one is the relevant study by Jennifer that directly would like to know the improvement of the students' writing abilities uh, in the undergraduates through the extensive reading. And the result show also that this activity or the activity or the uh, characteristic of extensive reading give uh, gains in vocabulary and also writing skills. Uh, so that I try to, uh, what is it, analyze the difference or the novelty in my project or my program later on in this master that in my a project there will be a book club book club and the book club is different with other uh, previous researcher in this book club uh, I'll make such kinds of uh, group for discussion so the difference the point of the different is on the discussion the discussion here means that uh, the student will what is it share their uh, books their desire or their interest in reading a book and we would like to discuss it on the group itself and the use of uh, reading log. Since of the previous research emphasizing in using reading log in the writing tasks, but I just want to know how the students here uh, in summarizing their ideas after reading some books, uh, some books uh, in their group. So I don't want to give the uh, a task, but just guide them, guide them into a good, uh, guide them in making a good summary by using some aspects of writing and process of writing itself. So here um, is my basics or my foundations for doing uh, the program in this master is by using uh, Tari from Bamford and Renandia and France. It's about the ER characteristics, so that why uh, we would like to show that ER is very enjoyable, is joyful, pleasure, and then uh, the students can just by themselves about the topics or the genre of the books that they have to read. Then I'll give a model for them to find out the books and how to uh, what is it to classify the books, for example, the topics or the genre for, they would like to read about fantasy, fiction, science fiction, and mystery, humor, and many others. It's, that's uh, the point out in this our characteristics. So hopefully in my program later on, um, all the characteristics can be implemented well. Well, next, this is the types of ER that I have adapted from Anandari and Iswandari. Uh, there are some, some steps 
for example is i'm from support and then building students interests and the last one is book availability for the first is i'm from support here i'll try to uh what is it um collect them into a group a whatsapp group that support them in getting or in browsing or in finding a book so all all the books can before uh, can be uh, looked for by their, their themselves based on their interest or desire. So, uh, in choosing the materials that emerge the students' enthusiasm, like I said before, that the genre is based on their desire. So, the book availability is based on their activity. They can find uh, or they can browse by themselves. Here is the blue club. Uh, I, I plan to uh, use book club discussion, like I've said to you. Then uh, I'll choose one of my writing class that consists of around 26 students in the class. Then I'll uh, divide them into some group. The group will be consisting of five students later on. Um, it be based on the survey that I will send to them. So I'll ask them about the desire or the interest related to the books that they will read. So uh, I'll make such kinds of categorization or classification. For example, in a, in a class, there's some number of books that they like to read. Then there will be a group of that uh, book club discussions and then the second one is about the book club components there will be reading writing community sharing and the last one is instruction first is in reading so in reading activities of course it will encourage the uh, excuse me Bu. you still have one minute to go okay. Okay, thank you very much. In, in encourage students' vocabulary mastery and in writing, it stills on the reading log. In reading log, I'll get them in emphasizing and synthesizing, in summarize and in building the ideas. And the, the next one is in community sharing, of course, that will um, attain by all the students. The whole group will be uh, in this group discussion and the last one is the instruction of course the instruction is depend depend on the components of the book club discussion for example here is the book club component so that uh, we can see from ibu are you there bunurul bunurul are you there Okay, well, Bapak Ibu, uh, perhaps there is a uh, yeah, connection problem with Bu Nurul. So, but something that we can also get from her presentation is that once again, ER will help students get more vocabulary so that uh, in this case, uh, the students are going to be able to, uh, the students are going to be more fluent in writing. So I think uh, we have finished doing the presentation, the sessions for today. So. I think I'm going to give the floor back to the Master of Ceremony, Bu Aulia. Time is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ibu Eka. Okay. Um, so, dear participants, uh, we are at the end of this uh, webinar. So, um, thank you very much for all participants for participating in our program. But before you leave, please fill out the, the exit form which is provided in the chat box and in the slide that we are going to share here. So here is the slide and complete all the parts of our exit questions. Wait a minute. Okay, everyone can see? So I'm going to share it also in the chat box.
Have you got it? And please, uh, please join our Telegram group here. So we can share our documents and also uh, the slides presentations from all the speakers and panelists from uh, Virtual Talk 13 and Virtual Talk 14. So I will share the link also in the chat box. Okay. So Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we are at the end of this webinar today and next month we still have uh, next virtual talk 15 hosted by Universitas Kristen Duta Wichana on November 7, uh, 2020 at uh, 10 until 12 in the morning. Thank you very much for your nice attention. Uh, I will close this webinar by reciting Hamdalah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Bye. Bye. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Hi, Miss Tina. Hi. Thank you. Seka. Bye. Joey. Everyone. Nice to have you Thank there. You. Thank you. In touch, everybody. <laughs> oh, yay! My brother! Thank you, everyone. Okay. Mm -hmm.